It's Wednesday, May the 9th, and you're tuned in to the Chiyomi Podcast. I'm Vince. I'm Vince. <laughs> That's right, you are. <laughs> and this is the Geek Chic Culture Show, and we talk about all the cool things in the world. I'm Anthony. What's up, everybody? I don't know. It's a new week. Sky. Sky's up. Is it? <laughs> bum, bum, bum. The only way that would be happening, or true, is if you believed in a flat earth. True. And everyone are, knows. Are you telling me that you saw? All I all I'm saying is that a compass wouldn't work on a round Earth because it would just point through the Earth, are and there's sure? no way that it could point at both poles at the same time because mm. it's a sphere. How could it reach? It doesn't make any sense. I want to get to who, whose side you're on now. <laughs> <laughs> What's your argument for? <laughs> So guess what? This week we uh, decided not to do anything. <laughs> That's a lie. We went bike riding. That's true. We, we because it is the summer months. Anthony has bought a bike. I did. Before we record, we have started cycling. We did. So if we sound a little fatigued, it's because I'm fatigued. Yes, I'm not though. Hey, um, guess what? What's up? Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> I saw you go up a hill and then back down and then back up the hill again, and I'm like this. Bitch, <laughs> this motherfucker. He like I looked at him and he looked away. Like he wanted to make sure he wanted to like surprise me. It's like oh he won't he won't know it's me. He won't know it's me. It'll be some other biker and I'll surprise him again. I'll be like, yo, what's up? Why are you so slow? Yeah, you jerk. I had to get my workout in. Jerk. <laughs> Biking's hard. All you gotta do is just catch up. Uh, yeah, it's hard. That's all you gotta do. It's, it's pretty simple. You just keep pedaling. Just do it. You just just do it. Just do it. And uh, then you'll be there. That's my tip. I guess. That is my pro tip. We do not have a review this week. Nope. Not that I know of. Did you uh, finish uh, Agretsuko? No, I didn't. Okay. You know why? Why? Because I'm still watching The Office. Ah. Uh, yeah. You're um, watching the popular one. Actually, they're both popular. Yeah. You're watching the more popular one. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And it's still... Really good. All right. I'm on the tail end of season five, and uh, I'm loving it. Anyways, ba -da -ba -ba. let's okay. uh, switch gears for a second, because we got a question from Paul Chu. A question to chew on. Uh, speaking of which, he did it, He did appreciate that you wanted to move the spoilers to the end. Oh, yeah. No problem, Paul. No worries. And I'm sure there's other listeners who appreciated that as well. Yeah. I'm glad that people appreciate me. Yeah. At least someone does. Vince, <laughs> oh. <laughs> I was gonna, I was trying to look away. I'm like, wait a minute, wait, is he trying to hint something? <laughs> God, um, yeah. So there you go. Anyways, Paul writes. So Infinity War happened, and we all think it's great. It's pretty good. I feel that a lot of the sentiment is due to the compelling villain that Thanos made. This week's question: Why do you think the compelling MCU villains are so few and far between? Ego, Dormammu, Baron Zemo, many others come to mind as almost throwaway villains. Do you think this is because non-nerd normies need to have their heroes win at the oh, end wow. of the movie? Fucking shots fired. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Okay. You wanted to stop there before we move on? Sure, let's stop there and then go forward. So I want to I hear you first. Like, why do you think that those kind of thought-out villains are so few and far between? Because, mm. like, if, if I remember... Cap one, like maybe Red Skull mm -hmm. works. Mm -hmm. um, but other than that, I can't really think of someone that had sort of a depth like Thanos did. Uh, Loki. Okay. Yeah, that counts. Loki's the only good villain I could think of. Yeah. Um. Well, they are all... Uh, I don't know, to be honest. I think it's a matter of, of medium. I think it's a matter of time, right? Mm -hmm. Like you can't... Like uh, Dormammu's case yeah which is you have to set up dr strange as who he is what he is why he is the way he is yeah right and that eats up a lot of time and who's like his main villain which is dormammu right mm -hmm. and that but that thing is is like dormammu being this cosmic being that is like an all-powerful sorcerer yeah that also sets up that also helps set up for him right like to, to learn about dr strange as a character because it's like oh his greatest villain is this also this other sorcerer so he's powerful right 
it that fight for how shallow it was kind of builds off that. But yep. I don't think you'll ever, <clears throat> unless they dedicate a whole movie like they did with Thanos to the villain yeah. like that. I don't think you'll ever get that just because you have to make this runtime reasonable. Yeah. You can't have this yeah. six hour grindhouse film mm-hmm. where you're going to learn every little nook and cranny yeah. like you would in the comics. So. Yeah. yeah, no, I, I agree. I would also say that like in the case of Thanos, I think the only reason he works is because that movie is told from his perspective. Yeah. And like he's and then in terms of the fight of the good guys against the bad guys. um, Thanos is the only bad guy in that movie. Yeah. Whereas on the good guys, they have so many characters. Yeah. And he has minions. Yeah. Right? But like they, they're they're meaningless, right? And, and the reason like the the so many characters yeah. work is because they all have their own movies that build up to this. Yeah. So I would say that the only reason the villains, you know, are are hard to come by in the Marvel films is that they only aim to exist for the those specific films that they're in, and there's yeah. no need to focus on them any further than that yeah they're not gonna have like yeah. uh like even this though this is an event like yeah. i don't think it's gonna be as crazy as say a comic event where it's just like oh here's all the villains and all the things and they're doing all the craziness and then sides are switching and whatever whatever yeah. right they're trying to simplify it down before they get too buck yeah. wild yeah um but yeah i mean yeah it's uh i as per- someone who generally likes villains or anti-heroes a yeah. lot it is kind of a bummer that they are mostly thrown away. Yeah. But into a second point, like the the heroes always have to win type yeah. thing. Like I don't think that's a like a non nerd normies yeah. thing. Like if you look at if you look at most comic books, if you even look at most movies, happy endings are are kind of like they're good, like they're fun, right? You can do a lot of stuff. It doesn't leave your audience kind of peeved yeah uh or sad or whatever and those stories exist right like we always talk about um my high school roman- romantic comedy snafu yeah um and there's a, a lot of other examples that i just can't think of where st- endings are sad and yeah. you know what shit doesn't work out because mm. but those are always at least on on a mass scale like even anime fans for my high, for snafu uh, I th- a lot of people I know complained about that ending because it was quote unquote too real, right? Yeah. And so it's not it's not what a lot of people come to media for. Right? And that's probably business. That's probably like a business decision. Mm-hmm. That was that one good. So we're eating expired Timbits. <laughs> Vince just found a box of Timbits in the basement that have been here since Monday. Mm-hmm. Just so you know, it's Wednesday. Mm-hmm. Um, and he ate one. He's like, oh. This one's okay. Because we just ate two, like, real stale ones. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I just think that's, uh, the, like, the whole thing of endings have to be happy isn't just because of, quote-unquote, normies. Right? It, it's something that's in all media. To be fair, I don't, I wouldn't, like, it's not so much that it's the whole non-nerd normies comic books have always been that way the hero always wins yeah and this is just following like i know a lot of people who read comics and they don't like it when the hero loses mm-hmm. and i think for a lot of people they come to comics because they want that escape they want that they want to see their heroes be the good guy and, and win and i feel like that's a reflected a lot in what well, that's the thing the about you yeah that's the thing about superman right yeah like superman is all things to all people yeah so yeah, for as much as I love bittersweet endings, like I'm not gonna ever go into a, a superhero movie hoping that the hero is gonna lose. Yeah, right. Like I don't know. Um, all right, let's move on to the next part. Uh, also, I think it's pretty used, universally accepted that Loki and Thanos have been the best MCU villains to date. Why do you feel? Who do you feel were the most neutered and tossed away? Neutered and tossed. I would say Dormammu as the example I brought up, yeah. which is they they used him. They use an all powerful sort of sort of <clears throat> space being. Specifically to uh, further the intro of Doctor Strange. Mm. Like, even though it was this epic space thing, yeah. um, it still didn't really... He, like, he didn't pose much of a threat. Like, yeah. he figured out how to beat him. Yeah. Through sheer annoyance, right? Yeah. Uh, other than that... Hmm. I don't know. I feel like Ultron could have been more of a badass. Ultron could have been more of a badass. He did. Like, I don't know if he had to die. 
when he did the re- when they did the remix of Pinocchio's theme, yeah. it was all no strings on. I was like, man, I'm I'm ready. And yeah, then this I... guy was a bad, but they, yeah, it fizzled out and threw him away. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but that's who I would have picked. Um, oh, what's uh, his face from um, the new Thor movie from Ragnarok? Oh, the the slave guy, the guy who ran, ran the whole planet, the Grandmaster. Yeah, Jeff Goldblum. Yeah, like he was barely a threat. Yeah. He was just there for jokes. Like, yeah. I thought that was kind of lame. Yeah. 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 But it's also a different type of movie. Yeah. The villain there was Hella. Oh, yeah. True. Right. True. So. Yeah. And Hella. Oh, Hella was a good villain. She was good. Yeah. She was uh, She was evil. She was also very attractive. Yeah. You know, I'm not really into Kate Blanchett, but she looked good in that movie. Like, I don't understand. Like, if she was like, hey, Anthony, I need you to follow me and also... Like, I'm going to murder a whole bunch of people. I'll be like, you know what? You're hot. You can do what you want. Like, <laughs> got to do what you got to do. You got to do what you got to do. I understand. <laughs> I understand. Okay. And one final question before I put Infinity War away. You guys, Anthony particularly, have said that you were kind of done with the MCU and were just waiting to, through, to get through Infinity War and the next one, I'm assuming. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. So, we're going to finish the, the thing. Yeah. To be done with it all. Has the quality of Infinity War changed your mind at all? Not particularly. I agree. Um... I think this is a great storyline. A lot of this has to go with the actors leaving. Like, I want to see Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man. I want to see Cap as Chris Evans. And yeah. because their contracts are expiring, it's kind of like... Yeah, and it's more than that. Yeah. They've, they have themselves have said, to like, listen, we're done. Who said that? Well, like, they've... Like they've Marvel all, said that? Yeah, no, 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 no. Like, oh, the actors, actors. Have, they have expressed or hinted at least that, like, you know, at some point it's got to end. Yeah. And what better way... And so a lot of it is changing of the guards. And this isn't to say, like, I'm going to go out of my way to never see a Marvel movie ever again. Yeah. But I don't think I'm going to be as dedicated to seeing every single one yeah. like I am now. Like, yeah. I I have no real affinity for Ant-Man or Wasp or anything, but yeah. I'm still going to go see it because yeah. it's, it's, the... it's part of the whole thing. Yeah. Right? So... I think those kind of like side hero stories, yeah. I don't think I'm going to be as dedicated to wanting to watch. Like if yeah. I miss them, it'll be like, okay, whatever. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, I don't know if I would say that the quality of Infinity War was anything huge. I feel like it more or less delivered on the expectations that the other movies had set. Yeah. So um, in terms of continuing on past that, uh yeah like i'll watch uh, for sure if 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 there is something that looks interesting i'll watch it but yeah i won't be as i gotta see every single thing in the theaters within the first week to be a part of the zeitgeist um hey man and wasp i have zero interest as much as like paul rudd i just got zero interest still gonna see it yeah (laughs) i will say i am super excited to see captain marvel if only because it's definitely focused around S.H.I.E.L.D. and yeah. S.W.O.R.D. And that's more of an interest to me. Mm-hmm. Captain Marvel's cool, but she's not really... She's Superman, right? Sort of. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's like what I could gather from yeah. her Wikipedia page. Yeah, so, I mean, I mean, she'll be fine. And the fact that it takes place in the 90s. That, that too. That's be cool. the real reason I feel like that, that's like we should set this in the 90s because all the 90s kids if you're a 90s kid you'll remember these references yeah like that's that's the secret reason yeah. like, I want to watch that movie Devil Sticks uh, but yeah I don't know with the ending of Infin- of the Avengers I feel like yeah it'd be it would be a great place to just tie a bow on it and forget yeah. it's like when a new when you go to the comic store and they're like oh this is a new jumping on point right yeah this is a this is a great jumping off point yeah that's, that's just it <laughs> like Yes, I will. This was a great story. I I liked it for what it was, and I'm ready to leave it now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's where yeah. And I don't I think am. that's to say again, just that we think this stuff is bad. No, I'm just so worn out. Yeah, that's all it is. It's the reason I was like that when New Fifty Two first started. Yeah. For DC, I was like, I'm gonna start collecting Suicide Squad like a motherfucker, and then I did it for a long time, and I was like, I can't keep up yeah. with these releases. Like, and also. Even though I only collected one series, like mm. those comics take up a lot of space. Yeah, I mean it's it's anything like manga, yeah. like anime, like Bleach. I checked out once Ichigo lost his powers. Did the story continue? Oh hell yeah, I did. It sure did. Oh, it got dumb. But in my mind, it's over. Oh, trust. When Ichigo <laughs> lost his powers, that's the perfect ending. He yeah. walks off into the sunset. Yeah. He sells his friends in Soul Society who come visit him once in a while. Yeah. But he saved the world. Yeah. 
and they're like, no, dog. <laughs> Let me tell you about this guy who can summon space. <laughs> yeah. So that, for me, that's where Avengers is going to live. Yeah. Lives and dies. Lives. Alongside Bleach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In my head canon. That's where they all end. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's good. That's great. Let's move on to our uh, picks of the week. Yeah. You want me to start or you want to start? Mine are short. Okay. You go. My first one is Overwatch. Yes. Uh, there's a new map called Rialto. Rialto. And, sounds uh, Italian. This is basically the map that they used for the Overwatch Retribution event a couple weeks ago. Okay. The event map was at night, but the map that they're going to give you now as an escort map will be in the day. And it is Italian themed. It is beautiful. It sets the stage for the home base of Talon, the evil people led by Doom the Fist. And uh, Reaper to Death and Widowmaker. <laughs> and, and Death. And wi- <laughs> yeah. Okay. In Sombra. Okay. All right. And uh, it's a fun map. I really like, I like the way, I don't know. I oh, like, so it's out. Yeah, it's out. You can play it. There's a specific playlist where you just play that map. And cool. uh, it's an escort map, payload map. Those are my favorite types. Those in uh, hybrid. So I love it. I'm digging it. It's, nice. a, it's a cool map. Uh, it's different. You know, I, I really like the diversity of maps in this game. They tend to go around the world. Do a lot of cool things. So hmm. it's a fun map. The second thing is that uh, it's in between. It's kind of like off season in between events right now in Overwatch. And they always have something to keep your interest. So this time they're like, hey, let's support breast cancer. Okay. And they made a pink mercy skin. So I saw this skin. Yes, he did. It's the Pornhub skin. It's undoubtedly the shall we say most sultry mercy skin dude the pigtails <laughs> yeah they're killing you so mercy's supposed to be like i don't know early 40s late 30s yeah Th- this one makes her look like a cheerleader yeah yeah it does like all pink let's go team um this skin is only going to be available from may 8th to may 21st or something okay it's uh in support of breast cancer research F- uh foundation the only way you can get the skin is you actually just have to buy it. That's the only way you can get it. Here's the thing. Yes. It's $15. It is $15. I don't play Overwatch. Yeah. Uh-oh. I kind of mm. want to buy it. So I bought the skin. Yeah. It was, Because we're in Canada, it's $20. Fuck! Yeah. The good news is, though, Overwatch or uh, Blizzard have made a statement. They said all proceeds go to the research fund. Not just profits. No, it's all proceeds. Okay. That's so... Fair. Obviously, you know, if you feel it, better. Yeah. Like if someone in the back wants to be like, oh, are you sure it's all like, how do you know? It's yeah, blah, blah, blah. Like we can play the game forever. But their statement is all proceeds. Can I get a tax receipt? You cannot. As this is a charitable donation. You cannot. Lame. You can't. <laughs> I mean, because it's over. It's twenty dollars. So you can get a ta- you can get a tax receipt. Yeah, I, I don't know. How you if get you it, like get a digital receipt through your email and then see, I have a digital receipt, but it. I don't know if it actually says that it like it just says it's a purchase on the PlayStation Store. Oh, it doesn't say what it's for. Yeah, mm. like it says Mercy Skin, but I'm pretty sure it doesn't say for like whatever. Listen, I want to donate to charity, but <laughs> I also want to get something out of it. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> oh, the way the world works. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's uh, it doesn't change the game or anything, but it is easily the best skin that Mercy has. Okay. And uh, I'm using it. Nice. It's great. It looks great with gold uh, weapons. Is the beam pink? No, but she has different sound effects. Oh, they're like really bubbly and and cheerful. Oh, to to <laughs> yeah. like amplify the cheerleader effect. Yeah. All right. And when she talks, she has like a higher pitched voice. Oh my god! So it's uh. Do you guys need healing? If you've ever wanted that mercy fantasy, here it is. <sighs> Please, I have a brain for that. <laughs> okay. Um. Yes, I think I had another one. Was it the Walmart Canada? Canada. Yeah, with their E3 announcements. No, oh, okay. it was Deadpool and Celine Dion. Oh, that. Oh, this is this was weird. <laughs> yeah, keep just keep going. This is so, weird. like most movies, there's a soundtrack involved, and sometimes in certain movies they get a big time uh, musician, yeah. and they usually in a lot of like really great epic romantic movies, 
they have a, a scene or that's like a like a somber montage moment and they play a song and that song becomes associated with the film. For example. Yes. The Titanic. Oh, yes. What song would that be? I don't remember. Well, you know. Was it song. My Love Will Go On? Like, yeah, My Love Will Go On. Yeah. Sung by uh, the famous Celine Dion. Yeah. Well, Deadpool conscripted Celine Dion and they got her to sing a song just like that for <laughs> Deadpool. <laughs> And they released a music video in which Deadpool is, is dancing with Celine Dion in heels mm-hmm. the whole time. And it's incredible. It's so, oh, this is so weird because they, I love the way Deadpool dedicates themselves to the joke because this song is actually good, right? This isn't a joke song. Yeah. Like, this is a good, like, I would, I could listen to this yeah. and not know what the. Like what it's associated to. Yeah. It's like what was it? Like Beauty Will Come Can Beauty Come from the Ashes or whatever. Yeah. And it's like it's like a beautiful song. It's like really nice. <laughs> yeah. It's a really nice song. <laughs> but when you know it's attached to Deadpool, yeah. it's a completely different thing. Yeah. And that's fantastic. <laughs> like they didn't go out and make like a weird owl version of a Celine Dion song. They made a legitimately good Celine Dion song and then was like also it's for Deadpool. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. So good stuff. Yeah. It's good stuff. Check it out. Yeah. Since I already spoiled some of my leak, oh. some of my picks, I'll tell you about the leaks that happen. Uh-oh. E3 is just around the corner. Yeah. It's coming up. It is. But it's, to be honest, it's already here. Because Walmart Canada has leaked pretty much all the big announcements. <gasps> Uh, so they put up accidentally pre-orders for what is assumed to be every single thing being shown at E3, yeah. which assumes that all of these things are either this year or early next year. Okay. So I'm going to go through some of these that we already know exist. So yeah. the, the last of us two, yeah. uh, we got final fantasy seven remake. Oh, okay. Metroid prime, super smash bros. Yeah. Some Lego game. Beyond Good and Evil 2. Dreams. Some sports games and whatever. Wait, what's Dreams? Dreams is that, I think it's by Media, the one by Media Molecule. Oh, so it's not Nights into Dreams. No, that also, Nights into Dreams fucking sucks. (laughs) You don't know that. I do, (laughs) because I played it. It's not good. It's the best game ever. Uh, but the 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 main thing here is that they leaked a whole bunch of stuff that hasn't been announced yet. Ah, uh, yes. So we'll go through it. Which uh, you want to go through? I'll just go through an order that Wario sixty four posted it in. Um, just Cause four. Okay. Splinter Cell. Yeah. Dragon Quest two for the PS four and Xbox One. Wait, Dragon Quest two. Yeah, they're remaking Dragon Quest two. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Borderlands three. That's interesting. Yeah. Rage two. Again, who played Rage? But it might be the most beautiful, most hardware-intensive game that the PS4 has I'll ever seen. I'll have to buy it on my PC just to <laughs> benchmark it. Rage 2. I already said that. Gears of War 5. Oh, maybe I should keep my Xbox. Forza Horizons 5. An Assassin, a new Assassin's Creed game. Oh, wow. A new Assassin's Creed? Yeah. Are you cra- are you telling me that there's a new Assassin's Creed? That's fucking crazy. I think I like Call of Duty now. Come on. <laughs> Yeah, there was some other stuff that I didn't know about. So, like, uh, there's, like, a new Insurgency game. Yeah. Uh, there's a new wrestling game. Yeah. Some other stuff. Oh, the other one is The Division 2. Oh. Got a, got leaked. But it's a whole bunch of leaks. Yeah. Walmart Canada just doesn't give a fuck about, yeah. about anything. Yeah. So, yeah. There's that. So, look forward to those trailers, I guess. Yeah. Uh, also, speaking of E3... For the first time in two years, Square Enix will be holding their own press conference. Oh, they two s- years? What the skipped, fuck? They skipped out 16 and they skipped out 17. Okay. Uh, but they're coming back, and I assume it's because of Final Fantasy VII Remake. That was not Kingdom Hearts? Because of the le- It's not Kingdom Hearts, <laughs> man. The game's not coming out. It's not a real game. Are you sure it's like... Man, they got Final Fantasy VII and Kingdom Hearts. This would be the biggest... It's gonna, you know what it's going to be? What? It's going to be Kingdom Hearts DLC for Final Fantasy XV. Oh. What if it's actually Final Fantasy VI, but remade in like that chibi art style? They did four in. And they did uh, World in? Yeah. 
Eh. It's better than the mobile arc they or have. The 3DS. Yeah, I'd be down with that. That's oh, fine. Oh no, dude! You want to know the first time? You know, no, no, eh. You want to know how I first played through Chrono Trigger? 3DS. Uh, <laughs> That's how I did it. Uh, how can you call yourself a gamer? You don't have a Super Nintendo. I don't have a Super Nintendo. You're right. What's wrong with you? Because you own, you don't own, arguably the greatest console of all time. I own the PS2. Oh, I said arguably. <laughs> I own the PS2. Um, yeah, I don't know. If you want to get into that, the Super Nintendo. A is like ninety dollars if I want to buy one. That's cheap. B, all the good games are a hundred plus dollars. It's cheap. <laughs> and to be honest, I own the game on the Super Nintendo that I want to own, yeah. which is Final Fantasy three. But in your heart of hearts, don't you want to play it on its original platform? How it was meant to be experienced. I have it signed by Nobuo Uematsu. And I, I don't really wanna Don't you wanna get a second copy? Oh I I do. I kinda do. <laughs> Oh, you got me. <laughs> and I could just get the cart. I don't need the box. I already have the box. Yeah, it's fine. See? Complete in box signed by Nobo. That stays on the shelf. Yeah. Hmm. Mm. Interesting proposition you have brought up. Mm. My wallet is crying. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, that's happening. I, I assume it's more Final Fantasy shit. Uh, the next one isn't E3 related, but it's still video game related. Nintendo Switch's online service launching in September. Yeah. In case you forgot. I did forget. Yeah. $20 a year. It's coming out. It's going to give you access to a smartphone app, which is currently free. Wow, a smartphone app. It's going to give you access. Hold on. Hold on. How can the smartphone app be free when I'm paying $20 to get this access? It's free now. Oh. So here's the thing. All the online portions of all Switch games, yeah. of Splatoon, yeah. of Mario Kart, all free. Yeah. As soon as September rolls around, all these people oh will have had a year of god. free internet, and now they have to pay. Oh my god, that's awful. Yeah. So the the subscription twenty dollars a year will also finally let you put your saves to the cloud. Oh. So if you lose your switch or you break your switch or you lose your memory card, you don't lose everything. Well, I have to, I'd have to be using my switch first of all. True. Yeah. True. Uh, and then the other thing is you'll be able to play these classic NES games offline. Offline, Because you, you can download them to your Switch, and you don't have to be online to play them. Wow. Classics like Ice Climber, The Legend of Zelda, Balloon Fight, oh God. Soccer, oh my God. Tennis, okay. Mario Bros, Super Mario Bros, uh. Dr. Mario, Donkey Kong, and the best Mario game. Okay. Super Mario 3. Oh. <laughs> so you can play all these classics. Uh, okay. Here's the thing. Okay, tell me. The only thing that's really like intriguing me about this yeah. is online save backup. Yeah. But also, I have to be playing my Switch for that to matter. Yeah. Everything else, I don't give a fuck, because I own all those NES games, and if I want to play them, I'll just put them in my NES. Yeah. So it's kind of a, kind of a conundrum. Sure is. So. I don't know if it's worth it, even for twenty bucks. Mm. Mm. Is there even any online games that you still want to play? Like I stopped playing Splatoon. Xenoblade doesn't really have any online? online features. I don't know. I didn't buy that game for Mario Kart. You Are you going to buy Mario Kart? No. Exactly. <laughs> so, I don't know. This seems like a really weird thing. And because because it's so low. Call of Duty? No. Do, Doom on the Switch, though. The thing is, is like, because it's such a low barrier to entry, it seems all that much of a like a money grab ploy yeah whereas with playstation it feels like okay you're getting all these free games per month you're getting online access you're getting cloud storage and you're getting, pretty much getting the same basic stuff but because i use those consoles more it doesn't feel that way right? yeah so i i just think that they need more games yeah bayonetta 3 has to be released sooner rather than later i need more than just that though. yeah true because that's not gonna be online so yeah I don't know what they would need. What would they need to make that $20 worth? Like, to make you buy that? Or do they have to do anything at all? Or are you just going to get it? 
No, I probably won't get it. Okay. I don't know. Like, what they would have to do is they'd have to make me value the Switch as my platform of choice for online gaming. Fair. And I just don't see that happening. Let me tell you about Squid Kids. Nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Unless Nintendo makes their own version of Overwatch that somehow is better than Overwatch, not happening. What if they just put Overwatch on the Switch? No, because then I'm playing an inferior version. But what if you could tether your Switch to your phone and you could play Overwatch on the go? No. <laughs> no. No. Okay. All right. There's no portable Overwatch for you then. No. Apparently not. Uh, and then the last pick I have is not video game related at all. It's actually boy band related. Boy band. Uh, there was an interesting article by Brian Ashcraft, the Japanese reporter on Kotaku. Um, and the title is Underground Boy Bands Charge Fans by the Minute for Hugs and Finger Kisses. And it's a really cool article that goes into the underground idol scene or the, or the chika idoru scene chika idoru idoru um it's too much idoru and so these small like so idols when you think of idols in japan normally people think like akb48 and stuff like that yeah or even they get it confused with girl groups of korea like girls yeah. generation and stuff yeah. like that but there are a lot of underground idol groups oh, that just play i know oh <laughs> oh really i know you go to the you go to the meet and greets you oh, go to the handshake uh, events listen i'm part of some deep shit all right being a Macross fan, I gotta know about these underground idols. Would you say that you're a master of the idols? Oh no 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 <laughs> no, no, no. no 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 no. Okay, um, and, and it's just a really cool look into the scene yeah. of underground idols yeah. and what these boy bands are doing <clears throat> to basically make some extra cash, where they will go behind curtains and pay, like they will get paid to hug people do finger kisses which is like they'll go in for the kiss but they put their finger in between your lips so it's like it's a secret right and they do all this stuff and these girls lose their shit Whoa. yeah i gotta say like sometimes japan can be weird but sometimes they're also really progressive yeah <laughs> i because this is basically saying in japan if you want to actually be a celebrity there's a legit career path to go that way. Yeah. As opposed to here in in, in the West where it's kind of just Take like... Take the gamble, bruh. Yeah. Put all your heart in and who knows what happens. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. there it's just like, no, they have proper outlets where you can... And there's small time idols. Yeah. And like they have different levels. They're like, you start here. Yeah. You move here. If you're big enough, we go here. here. And so uh, the, the main thing apparently that the underground idols is, especially for boys, yeah. the reason it came about is because there's a company that pretty much has a monopoly... On big time idols, I think it's called Johnny's, and yeah, it would be called Johnny's. <laughs> a Japanese company called Johnny's. Uh, they pretty much have a monopoly on male idols. Yeah. So these other smaller people to get noticed by Johnny's will do these underground yeah. things, and to make extra cash, they will have these events. Yeah. Where they're doing kind of creepy things. Yeah. But it, it's yeah. a really cool read. He also had another article this week. It was about um. The history of the Japanese face masks. Oh, yeah. Right? And, like, why they use them so much. Yeah. Which is funny because, so, one day I was sick, and I, but I was recovering from being sick. Uh, I didn't go into work on Friday, but I went into work on Monday, and I wore a face mask to work because I didn't want to cough over everybody. Sure. And also, I didn't want to contaminate my own area. Yeah. Holy crap. The amount of looks you get, because it's not normal here, right? No. Like, the amount of looks you get on the street and the amount of questions you get from people is, like, insane. But every single time I explained it to somebody, it was like, oh, that's smart. Yeah. Right? It was never just like, that's weird. It was always weird at first. And then when I explained it, like, oh, that makes sense. Yeah. Right? And it, I don't know. It. I, I was in the office for two days and I was, I was sick still. But because I had the face mask on, like, yeah. no one else got contaminated. I didn't have to, like, clean my desk all the time. Yeah. I just kind of coughed into my mask. I was like, this is so useful. Hmm. So useful. Mm -hmm. But the main thing is because I work around children, there's a daycare right beside my office. And every all the kids were like, why are you wearing that mask? Right? Just asking the whole time. It's been like a week since then. 
they're still like, why aren't you wearing the mask anymore? What's going on? What happened? Like, it was just like a shock to them. They're like, what's happening? So it's pretty fun. Did you tell them from lies? No, I told them because I was sick. No, you should tell them from lies. No. Cause I'm an alien. You should say I was growing my mouth back. I <laughs> growing my mouth back. I lost my mouth. I don't want to growing it back. So, so I thought those were some pretty interesting articles that people should read. Yeah. Cool. And I believe that's it. Cool. That's gonna double check here. Yeah. Yeah, that's it, bro. That's cool. it. Cool. Two intro weeks. Yeah. Uh, okay. I'm gonna start off. I watched a movie. Okay. Called the Hitman's Bodyguard. Oh, what a coincidence! Because I also watched. Wait, the movie. why did you watch this? Because it was on net. I was I was scrolling through my Netflix yeah. queue and I was like, "Oh, the Hitman's Bodyguard," yeah. and I put it on while I was grinding out Neo. Oh. I also uh, watched the Hitman's Bodyguard. Yeah. What'd you think? That's a good movie. It is good. I really like that movie. Yeah, like it doesn't do anything particularly insane or over the top. Yeah. And it's not. And it's what you know what it is. It's one of those like. Secret big, love stories. Like big blockbuster comedies that just appeal to the mainstream super yeah. hard. Yeah. I also thought it was a really clever like secret relationship story. Oh, yeah. Right? Because it's played off as like this action comedy between the two. But really it's about relationships yeah. and like learning to give and take yeah. and like all that stuff. Yeah. And it's like, man, oh, that was a pleasant surprise. Yeah. The whole premise is so dumb. He's like, oh, I'm triple A security. Like, what the fuck does that even mean? Yeah, he's triple A security ranking. And he keeps saying it like we're supposed to know. Yeah. But it's... Because I, I like how that plays into a part of a joke where yeah. other people are like, triple A, are you an idiot? Like, <laughs> um, But like the basic... Pre- like, You want to say the premise? Or... No, go ahead. So the basic premise is that... Uh, I want to say Ryan Gosling. Uh, Ryan Reynolds yeah. is a bodyguard and he protects the highest class of the highest class clients uh-huh. and he was leading his japanese guy through yeah uh to the airport and everything yeah. was going hunky dory and as he was waving goodbye he gets shot in the face yeah he does right and then it fast cuts to yeah. ryan reynolds life just in the shitter yeah and pretty much what happens is that there's a leader of a country that wants a hitman dead so they put the hitman under p- police custody yeah and then Ryan Reynolds has to be the bodyguard for yeah. the hitman, hence the hitman's bodyguard. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But the whole time, the hitman, played by Samuel Jackson, has a wife that he wants to see that he yeah. loves. But also, Ryan oh, keeps wanting to see Ryan Gosling. Reynolds. Ryan Reynolds' character has a fellow police officer that he liked. Or was in a relationship Or with. was in a relationship with. And because of the whole thing, he thought she betrayed him. Yeah. Put the hit on the dude to make him get demoted. Yeah. Right? And it's the whole thing. But the story is like secretly about, hey, get out of your own ass. Yeah. Like if you want to be in a relationship, it's give take. Yeah. You have to learn both. You have to learn to. You have to learn to dance the dance. Yeah. Right. And it's it was actually like really cute. Yeah. On top of having really fun action scenes. Yeah, definitely. Samuel Jackson and uh, Ryan Reynolds they worked well together. It was fun. Yeah. A super fun movie. I like the I recommend it. Yeah. Yeah, it was nice. It was it's nice a popcorn muncher. Yes, very much so. If you want to just have a fun time, not really think too hard, it's a good movie. The whole time I watched it, I was playing Neo. Yeah. I did not miss a plot point at all. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> it's one of those I movies. could believe that, yeah. Uh, and then I watched this other show called Prison Break. Okay. Season 5. Now, I there was a time where my favorite shows were all going on at the same time, but they were all like the type of shows where... Only season one is the best, and it's the only thing I recommend. Yeah, it was Heroes, and the other one was Prison Break. Okay. Prison Break season one is, it's a little over the top, but it's kind of like wow, that's amazing TV. Okay. Uh, anyways, season the show ended four years ago with with, with four seasons, and it ends with the main character dying. Okay. Season five is resurrected from the dead. Pretty much. What? It's the reveal that he doesn't. He faked his death. Oh my god! And so I was joking. The first season is about breaking out of prison in America for some reason. Okay, season five is just fucking over the top. Mm. He's in a prison somewhere in the Middle East, but it's a war zone. So even even if you break out of prison, you're in a war zone, and it's all territory covered by ISIS. So it's it's just 
bananas and it's about a corrupt cia agent who runs a shadow operation and the idea is the main character faked his death so that he could work for the shadow operation in the cia to constantly break into prisons and break out bad guys oh my god yeah it's insane it's it's really just over the top and ridiculous but does it, it like retroactively change everything from the past seasons like no the perspective you have no it does not okay it because like they they're they're really good about that. Like it definitely is. Oh, this character is actually not dead. Uh, they bring back a lot of the cast from the original show. Why are they breaking out criminals? Because the guy. Okay, so the CIA shadow op. He feels like justice is too slow, so he's gonna serve up his own sense of justice. Oh my god! And sometimes that means breaking out the worst of the worst terrorists to speed up the process. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. It's fucked. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Yeah, no, if so, I don't know if you could watch it on its own to be like, what? But okay. if you were one of the few who actually finished Prison Break, it, it's actually really fun to see how they wrapped it up. It's only, I think, eight episodes. Per season? No, the final season. Oh, the final eight. season. Yeah, okay. yeah. How the long first, are the rest of the seasons? The first season, I think, was 20 episodes... And then twenty, and then they got progressively shorter. Okay, but yeah, it's uh, it's, hour it's, long. Yeah, okay. four forty minutes. Yeah, right. so it it was fun to see. Uh, and then the other show I watched it was the next Netflix thing, and it the title is just fastest car. I saw this. And it was, was like, recommended to me, and I was like, okay, I'll bite. <laughs> <laughs> I'll click it. <laughs> yeah, they show the fastest cars. You'll like it. So the idea is. Who has the faster car? Okay. The rich guy with a supercar or the three blue collar workers who build sleeper cars? Ooh. Oh, money versus mechanics. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. So the idea is, uh, so like the first episode is, yeah, so there's a guy who has, you know, he just has money because he works in the financial industry and he yeah. bought himself a Ford GT. Oh, this car's so nice. Oh my god. There's three other people and they filmed them and they're like they're all they're all definitely blue the bluest of blue collar. Okay. You know, they can bear like they can uh, they're the type of people who they've put more money into their car than their house. Okay. Right? But they have Their car's insane. Yeah, but they're all sleeper hits. So like one guy has a fucking minivan. I was gonna that's say he's just, like a Chevy Nova. No, he has a minivan that's putting out over a thousand horsepower. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's yeah, there's every episode there's always like someone with a truck. The first episode is a girl with a truck. Okay. And you know, she's got a lot. Just, They're blue that. collar. Their yeah. million horsepower truck also has to be their work truck. Yeah. And so like it it's film documentary style, so they show you seven days before the race, prepping for the build, testing. They race out like the salt flats, like Drag, uh, drag strip. Okay. They go to track. But uh, yeah, th- but you get to, it's, you know, you get to learn about their family, their background, why they do this, their feelings towards the competition and whatnot. And it's, it's super fun to watch, but there's a, there's a great irony to the show that I don't know if it's deliberate, but it just, I find it really upsetting. It's the fact that, so a lot of the blue collar workers, they, it's the typical stuff that you would expect. Like, Building a car is, like, my car is better because it shows that what you can get if you put your own time into it and you can get a car that's got more value than a supercar because yeah. it's just as fast, but it's, like... Fractions of the price. Fraction, yeah. It's just a fraction of the cost. And I, it's the same argument when people tell me that, oh, model kits are better because you build it yourself. Okay. And, like, to a certain extent, I get that. Um but their and their, their their idea is no one will ever suspect this car to be fast, you know. People will, will they'll see it on the street. And yeah, be like, yeah. I had I had a friend who had a, yeah. a quote unquote sleeper car. Yeah, and they'll be like they'll make pre judgmental errors, and that'll teach them to not judge my car. Yeah. But at the same time, all they want to talk about is how oh this guy over here has he comes from money. I don't know. Maybe his daddy bought it for him, and, and now he's just and it's just judging. And yeah. that I find that so upsetting. I think that's that's just like a, a wider commentary on people, yeah, in general. But it's just like it's one of those things that just made me just really sad and angry when I was watching because it's like 
they only tend to find people who have that outlook. Like they, they, they genuinely hate rich people because f- for the simple reason of they're rich and they're not. Yeah. You know, there was one guy though, who was like, and I, and I really want to for him to win because he, his, his idea was like, Hey, listen, that guy's got a supercar. You know, he's doing something right. I just want a piece of that. Yeah. That type of that that pride. It wasn't the, these people suck. And yeah, it was, and at the same time, like, and that I think that's the thing about the show that I don't like. There's specific rules. The sleeper cars can be customized. You can do whatever the fuck you want with your car. Okay, but the supercar guy has to be stock. He has to be fresh off the lot. Okay, and like that's it. And well, I, I think the people who own those cars wouldn't want to mod them anyways, because that like tanks the resale value. Right, if there are these like finance rich people, yeah. that car is probably an investment on top of being. Well, the thing fast. is, uh, the first guy they show like he's actually really into cars, and oh, he has okay. a garage full of stuff that's customized. But the one he uses is a stock Ford uh, GT. Interesting. Okay. Uh, just for like a bit of background, he was really good friends with See, Paul Walker. See, that was me prejudging the show. Yeah. So like for background, the first guy, the rich guy, is very good friends with Paul Walker or was very good friends with Paul Walker. Yeah. I was going to say, is he knows ghost? Like, yeah. And like he talks about how they used to have a huge collection of cars. They worked on cars all the time, but they all had money. Yeah. So made and, it easy. And like, it, and then for me, it's like these people, the rich people and, and the people who don't have or who are less fortunate, both of them still share a passion for cars. And like, that's what I'd rather see. Not this animosity towards rich and poor. And like that's that's the part of the show that I don't really like, but I understand why they did it because it fucking sells. Dude, you just described racism through cars. Yeah, I know. Right? I like know. it's oh, these people have the same love for the same thing. Yeah, but you're brown. Yeah, I know. I know. It's sad. And like it comes to the point where I'm like, well, you know what? I do want the rich kid to win. It's uh, like because there is one guy who's just he has money. But there's also okay. Like the thing is, is like there's. In, oh, don't in, get me wrong. There's also episodes where the rich guy is, is an asshole. Yeah, he's just told. And like even in in your life, like yeah. Vince, your personal life, yeah, like stories you've told me of when you were invigilating tests, yeah, where you asked a kid like, "Was it like to be so rich?" Yeah, and instead of answering your question normally, yeah. he went, "Oh, I don't know. I don't know what it's like to be poor." Yeah, right. It's like, oh, you had to throw in a little jab because yeah. you're an asshole. Yeah, right. Yeah, like. The, the 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 hatred thing goes both ways. Yeah, for but sure. But it, it's annoying yeah. either way. Yeah. But yeah, no, I just wish the show wasn't so... Like, that's definitely one of the things the show tries to center on. And I just wish it wasn't. I wish it was about the car. Fair. But I guess in that environment, like, that's half their motivation. Right? For the poor people to show up the rich people. Yeah. So. But it's it's worth a watch. It's... it's uh. Did it's they, surprising. Did, did they play it out where like the the quote unquote poor people like win most of the time, or uh, or you the, want to leave that a secret? No, I mean of the of I I've only seen three episodes, and I would say in like uh one of them with the rich guy one. Okay, yeah, and it's it's fucking hilarious. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, because I I feel like a lot of those shows usually set up to be like this guy's the underdog, even though he has this thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think it probably would, like, if they did allow them to mod the supercars, I think yeah. at a certain point, yeah, monetary, like, skill would go over so, actual... So, yeah, the thing that I want to see is the sleeper car versus the team of engineers who, who just, like, go to town on a supercar. Yeah, who car. take, like, a 4 GT and yeah. then just pimp the And they're like, oh, it. we'll show you what it's really... Like, yeah. we'll show you what happens when we have a pro-level team with money. Yeah. Yeah. And, like, to, to be honest, that's not... In, like, to me, that wouldn't be interesting. Oh, no, of course not. Right? That would just, like, yo, watch this guy get fucked. <laughs> and then also he gets so sad that he kills himself later. I know, I know. It's like saying, put them up against a professional racing team. Yeah, you know what I want to do? I want to put Timmy. I know Timmy's in a wheelchair, but so one of the races, the first episode, there's a guy in a wheelchair. We're gonna put him up against Mike Tyson. It's yeah. gonna be a boxing match. Yeah, <laughs> Timmy's yeah. gonna get fucked. <laughs> yeah, I know. So, but no, it's fun. It's really fun. Like okay. they, they do a great job at. You never know who has the advantage. All right, I'll, I'll check that out. Up until the race happens, and it's... I I saw the title and I was like, "That's a dumb title." Yeah, and I just didn't. Yeah. I just didn't. Oh, it's it. a, it's a definitely a dumb title. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah, it's been my week. Okay. Uh, in uh my week, other than him and his bodyguard, still been playing Neo. Um, I am at a point now where I'm like, this game is fucking amazing. Oh. <gasps> 
The game's super, super duper good. Oh, wow. Do you wish you finished it last year? I do so much. Holy crap. Mm -hmm. It takes a, it takes quite a while for it to differentiate itself from Dark Souls. Mm -hmm. Right? When you first start the game, it's you get a sword. You're going through dark and dank, dungeon, whatever, dungeons. Uh, and... It's it's Dark Souls. It's wait for the attack, hit them. Mm. But instead of a backstab, it's stamina fatigue, hit him with mm. a crit, and all this stuff. But once you start getting further into the game and further into the story, yeah. and builds become available, it just fucking changes the whole dynamic of playing that game. What turns into a what what was a Dark Souls like back and forth type thing? Yeah, turns into a I can probably overpower these people with my gear, um, if I play certain things out right, uh, and I, and I have certain strategies going into a fight. Like I can make it more exciting visually, but also just easier in general. Um, so for example, I've got a dual sword build that utilizes a sword called like the move called water sword it just attacks like crazy water sword but i get uh i get a damage bonus when i'm hitting people from behind yeah so when i face bosses it's i use a slow down move to get behind them i use a, a move on me that ups my attack the like all this magic stuff yeah and you can make your armor work with your magic which works with your builds to do crazy shit yeah and it, the game really becomes something else especially when bosses stop being these like slow lurking monsters into other like famous samurais from the feudal japan era yeah right like facing human characters and like facing those really changes the way you play that game because you're facing people that are like you right right and the more i play it the more i'm in love with it uh like to the point where I'm doing every single side mission and just even though sometimes they're reused maps and stuff, mm -hmm. I'm just having fun the whole way through because it's always a different challenge. You're always unlocking stuff. I want to say I'm like 40 to 50 hours in. Holy. And I still haven't beat the game. Yep. There's four new game pluses. Why? Because that's how they did it. Because when you get to the new game plus, you unlock different tiers of items, right? Oh. So you can make your builds even better. I haven't touched the DLC at all. Wow. So there is there is content for fucking days. Yeah, it sounds like it. And this game is awesome. I just... I wish I played it sooner. Well, now you know. Yeah. Other than that, uh, I bought Rhythm Heaven on the 3DS. Um, Ninten the Nintendo was, was having a sale if you had some coins. Some My Nintendo coins. Some coinage. Uh, that game's Rhythm Heaven... As fuck. It's Rhythm Heaven. It's just the best of of all the Rhythm Heaven games. And here's all the fun mini mm -hmm. games. That's it. Mm. It's not much more to say about that. It's just if you like Rhythm Heaven, you'll like this game because it's the greatest hits. It's mm. fucking fantastic. It's still hard. It's still hard shit though. And then the last one I've been playing, I, I actually started getting into Hearthstone. <gasps> oh my. Now that I have a phone. That's not an ancient brick. I can finally play Hearthstone, and I, I realized it about a week, two weeks ago. And I didn't want to talk about it before, but I'm getting into the point now where I'm playing ranked. I'm looking up decks. Oh. I'm I'm tweaking my decks oh. to make them better with cards I have. Who are you? I'm I'm carefully spending my free game in game currency that I get wow. from matches to buy packs. I haven't spent any real money on the game. Wow. Uh, How could you? What? Play for free? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then also they have a new dungeon run mode um, that's like a monster hunt. And it's yeah. with brand new characters yeah. and brand new hero powers. Yeah. And that's just super fun. Like there's one, uh, she's a time tinker. Yeah. And her hero power is just start your turn over. Yeah. Right. It's... I like Hearthstone. I like what Hearthstone has become. It's a very it's a very approachable TCG that doesn't require huge amounts of money to get started. Mm. It, it actually requ requires no money to get started. Mm. But I'm slowly learning that if you want to get into the meta decks, uh, you... I don't. 
you have to buy packs. Oh my you will God. not you will not unlock packs and cards at a fast enough clip to where it's worth it for you to free to play. Even though that you can you can do a thing called dust. You can dust your bo- your extra cards. Yeah. Um something dirty. You can dust them. Give me that they just dust. stole that shit from Guilty Gear. Give me that dust. Give me that dust. Yeah. Uh so you can dust your cards and you can use that dust to craft cards you don't have or yeah. a, a second card of a card you do have. Yep. Yeah. Um but legendaries are so expensive and you get so little dust from the bonus cards that because you're starting out, you most likely only have commons. Yeah. Right. Um it's just not it's not worth it to try and grind it out. Unless you just have all the time in the world. I don't. You don't. Exactly. Um, but I've been using a pretty basic taunt deck. I've been using the Druid class. Its hero power is to gain one armor and one attack, and then it can attack stuff. Um, but the game has changed a lot from when I first played it. I first played it when it came out, and it was just Swing City. Just swing for the fences. First guy to hit zero. Like, Dumb. Pretty much, did you swing yeah. first? You win. Right? But now the game has changed a lot where there's a lot of counterplay between decks. There's lots of different types of decks between aggro, defensive, spell heavy. Yeah. Um, I saw one deck I played against I thought was just fucking bonkers was uh, the deck only has three monster cards in it. Three creature cards. It's this one legendary it's called Barnes. And what he does is that he goes through your deck and summons a 1-1 one, one version of a minion in your deck. No, sorry, it has two. It has two. So it has Barnes. And the other one is this guy. Oh, what's his, He's got some fucking, like, Eldritch Horror name. But he's a 10-10 for 10. Yeah. And his his uh thing is, at the end of your turn, summon a monster from your deck. Oh. So you play Barnes on turn three, because he's three mana. Yeah. He summons the only other creature card, which is a 1-1 one, one version of the 10-10, yeah. which still has the effect, which then summons the 10-10 ten, ten on turn three. Oh, I see. And then you just fuck the other guy in the ass. Yeah, okay. Right? It, it just immediately puts him on a turn two-turn clock on yeah. turn three, and you almost have no ways to deal with it unless yeah. you're just super prepared. Yeah. Right? You, ne- you never are. You never are. <laughs> Especially with the cards I have. You, you never are. And so it, it like seeing stuff like that, even though like I got crushed by it, is like super fun. Yeah. And it shows that Hearthstone has evolved in a way where you can make interesting things happen. And there's interesting interactions between cards and stuff like that. So That's good. It's been a it's been a lot more fun to play. Uh even if I am getting stopped by some of the meta decks. <laughs> yeah the other thing though is that because the uh, interactions are more important you can outplay people that have better decks i i'm playing a, a deck that its highest rarity card is a rare it's the, the one step up from common and with that i have beaten multiple people who run like semi-meta decks that are running legendaries and just cards that have crazy power yeah. because I outplayed them because yeah. I waited because I attacked when I needed to, because I saved certain spells for certain events. Yeah. Right. And these, and these people are obviously going to go higher in the rank than me because average they're going to win. But yeah. the fact that I could beat them by outplaying them or out mathing them pretty mm. much is, is pretty cool. It's good. Yeah. One of my favorite things to do is there's a, there's a card um, it's six mana, and what it does, it summons a one five scarab, so one attack, five health with taunt yep. for each minion on your opponent's side of the field. So you cast it, it summons it. If your opponent still has more monst- minions than you, ca- it casts again and again and again and again. So people do that, and it's like they usually can't get through like five one fives because it's yeah. just too much health. <laughs> and then you can just, uh, for Druid at least, you can use this uh, card called Primal Roar. And you double primal roar, and it gives you uh, them plus two attack. Mm. And then the ender is a, another one. I think it's like a panther thing. You can either summon a three two panther, or you can give all your minions plus one plus one. Mm. So by the time I do that, I have a bunch of six like six yeah. attack minions, and yeah. I just go ba 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 ba, and I swing into the face right yeah. because they didn't. They were like, okay, yeah. I'm not even gonna. He's not gonna win. Right? It's all yeah. one ones, and you just surprise attack, yeah. kick their ass. So it's a, it, it's fun that the game is now interactive. Cool. The only thing is, is that the game doesn't have any out of turn interactions. Like yeah. if it's not your turn, other than secrets, 
Mm. And you kind of got to build your deck around. You say you're missing the trap card? See, I'm missing trap cards. I'm missing instant sport spells. <laughs> I'm missing all that stuff. You activated my, my trap, trap card. <laughs> uh, I actually... <laughs> so oh. I've been watching a lot of like Twitch stuff lately. I've been, yeah. I've been learning about Twitch culture. Yeah. And uh, live streamers, IRL streamers and stuff like that. Apparently the new hotness to say is like poggers or pog champ. Yeah. When something is like awesome. Yeah. Um... But apparently Twitch had a thing where they just played through all of Yu-Gi-Oh! Like oh. the the show. Oh my. And it was Twitch chat reacts to oh, Yu-Gi-Oh! no. And it was the scene yeah. where they had like, it was him versus, it was Yugi versus Kaiba and they had the god cards out. Yeah. And it was just like infinite trap cards between the both of them. <laughs> yeah. Right? And it's just five minutes of, of Twitch chat going like, what is happening? <laughs> what is this show? Holy shit! <laughs> It was really funny. Uh, they're so drawn out too. Yeah, I'll try. I'll try and find the link again, and I'll send it to you. But it's uh, oh, it's so you good. You activated my trap card. Yeah. Oh, but you activated my trap card. But your trap card has activated my <laughs> trap card, Yugi, which turned all your Kari- which turned all your monsters into Karibos. Yeah. But all my Karibos protect me from a direct attack. <laughs> It's, it's fucking ridiculous and like cars that don't exist. It's amazing how exciting that show is, considering you don't know what either of them have at any point. Yeah, that too. Yeah. Or the fact that they have more trap cards than are allowed on the field. Yeah. Man. I think I still think the the show to real life disappointment is Beyblade. Oh, for sure. Yeah, like watching Beyblade and just being like, "Holy shit, they're like summoning dudes out of their tops and they're like battling their sparks and shit." Yeah. And it's awesome. Yeah. And then you get it <laughs> and you're like, oh, "This is fine, I guess." <laughs> And then you go to Pacific Mall yeah. and you buy the oversized weights. Did I ever tell you that story? Yeah. Oh, fuck. It's so good. And then you make their Beyblades explode. Yeah. Mm. Oh, the 90s. They're fun times. Yeah. I don't want to go back. I'd like to go back. With, like as your current self or as your past self? As my past self. Do you have the memories intact? No. Okay. Or, okay, I got a question for you. Yeah. If you could switch bodies, Freaky mm, Friday, mm, with anybody, mm, who would it be? But you get to keep all your memories. You don't just become that person. Like, your conscience becomes that person. You get to keep all your memories. Does it have to be today? doesn't have to. Well. Yeah. Yeah, it has to be today. We'll do that. Okay, Why? So, uh, all right. So it has to be a girl. See, okay. This is the part I was getting to. Because the coworker asked me this. Yeah. And I was like, well, do I have all my memories intact? And she was like, yeah. I was like, okay, well, I'm switching to a girl. Yeah. And she's like, what? Yeah. I'm like, yeah, that's like the most logical choice. Because like, I don't want to transfer to another dude. I know what that's like. Yeah. I want to be like a hot girl. Yeah, if it's a Freaky Friday, I'm yeah. going for the hottest I wanna, girl around. Yeah, I want to be a Kendall Jenner. Yeah, I want right? to go all the way. Be a Beyonce. Uh-huh. Right? Uh-huh. I want to know what that feels like. Uh-huh. I got to know. You got to know. I don't know. Think, uh, with the assumption that I'm coming back, of course, I'm going to be a girl. Okay, what if you're never coming back? <sighs> That's tough, man. That's tough. What if you're know. never coming back? I don't know. Because I don't know if I want the baggage associated with like some of these super popular people. Mm. Okay, then be like a be like a Tristratus. Be like you were famous at one point and you're still hot, but mm. like nobody really remembers who you are. And if you were out on the street, like it wouldn't matter. Mm. I don't know. Or Alita. I don't want to be. Why don't I just go to wrestlers? I was gonna say I don't want to be a wrestler, man. Stacy Keebler. Ooh. She's barely know. a wrestler. She's got legs. Yeah, she's tall. She's tall and has legs. <laughs> <laughs> she's just tall. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know who I'd be. But I just know it'd be a girl, you'd a be, hot girl. You'd be China. No, <laughs> no, not be China. You said a hot girl, China. No. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know if I'd want to be like, see, like the more Caitlyn Jenner. The more interesting situation is if I knew someone that was super hot. Oh, interesting. Because I would get more value out of that. Oh, I got a fucked up idea. Yeah. Would you trade places with your girlfriend? No. And then your girlfriend's in your body. No, 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 no. no. You're still in a relationship. Yeah, that's fucking weird, though. Yeah, it's so weird. You know, that's like, see. No. no. Why not? What's wrong? No. I don't understand. No. It seems like no. you said a hot girl, someone you know. Wouldn't you want no to fuck yourself? No. 
No. No. No. Please no. I feel sorry. No. Thank you. Oh, I'm gonna ask that. I'm gonna ask it. I'm gonna ask my coworker if she'd want to switch places with her husband. You know, I'm gonna ask that too to my coworker. <laughs> See what she thinks about that. But you got to set it up like I did. You got to yeah. set it up as in like if you could switch places. Like who who could you yeah. figure Friday with? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. For sure. And then you got to drop it. Then you got to drop the bomb of yeah. would you get fucked by your own husband yeah. oh, <laughs> in your body? Oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> Is it cheating? <laughs> uh, mm. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. All right. All right. Leave the audience with that, I guess. Oh. Uh. Is it though? I don't know. It fulfills all your requirements. I guess so. I guess. <laughs> uh, I guess. <laughs> I feel like it'd be a more fun situation. No, no. I don't know, actually. Interesting. Yeah. I just know it'd be a girl. For yeah, sure. that's the that, okay. That's the only part I wanted to get to because I said that too. Yeah. And they all looked at me weird, and I'm like, "Why is that weird?" Yeah. It's like. The logical choice. Yeah. Yeah. I've been a guy all my life. That's not going to change. So, uh, let's see what the other one has to Well, you're, you're going to have to experience it once. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You got to go to Pound Town and take <laughs> take one to the chin. Oh, God. <laughs> oh. 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 Mm, that seems like a great place to end. Right in the kiss. That's the, yeah. Mm-hmm. Thanks for listening. <laughs> Bye.